recording, Kelsey? Or all right. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another uh, Wash Canada talk. And I think this is our what is it, Kelsey? The fifth. We're number five. I think, uh, yeah, it's number five now. All right. We'll soon be double digits. Mm -hmm. Look at that. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, this morning we have. Um, Dr. Lena Tang from Uni uh, United Nations University Institute of Water, Environment and Health. And she will be talking to us about WASH and health. And without further ado, I'll pass you the mic, Lena. Take it. Thank on. you. I'm going to share my screen. Um, so some of you might have seen iterations of this presentation before, like Clarissa, for example. So apologies if it's not completely new to you. Um, I'm using this as an opportunity not only to um, introduce um, what my current research around water and health, but especially what my institute, the United Nations University Institute for Water, Environment and Health is up to these days in terms of its water and health portfolio. So as Caetano noted, my name is Lena Tang and I'm the water and health lead at UNU Inwe. UNU Inwe, for those of you that aren't aware, because many people aren't aware that we are situated in Canada, is um, the UN's only a water focused think tank. We're based at McMaster University of all places. And um, on my side, I'm always keen not only to talk about our research, but also how can we in this regard um, connect with the broader Canadian community. So really happy to be here today. Thank you, Caetano and Kelsey for the invitation. Um, what I wanted to delve into today for my presentation is um, how UNU in a way is especially situating itself towards um, that, not just focusing on wa safe wash services, but how can wash support good health and well-being? So what is good health and well-being? That will be covered. Okay. General background, many of you are familiar with the SDGs and unsurprisingly at UNU Inway, we focus on SDG six, which is clean water and sanitation. In terms of um, overlap um, for the water and health portfolio, we especially have a particular interest in the intersection of SDG six with SDG three. Um, SDG three focuses on on health and well being, with health being understood as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Many, many organizations, including WHO, focus on the supposed overlap between SDG 6 and 3 being disease prevention through universal safe water and sanitation. And there's good reason for this. Um, Diarrhea, um, at least in a pre-COVID era, um, still remained a top 10 global cause of disease. We haven't seen the latest stats for this. Um, so a significant proportion of WASH programming does aim to reduce diarrheal disease, given that um, in, um, in 29, based on 2019 data, it was a, a top eight out of 10 disease. And when we account for economic circumstances, such as living in a low income country, diarrhea actually becomes the fifth leading cause of death. Uh, in 2019, an analysis from, a, from leading WASH and health experts estimated that 60% of all WASH related mortalities were attributed to diarrhea. So this is when you think about um, WASH related public health interventions. This is uh, a major, uh, potential major impact if we're talking about uh, preventing um, diarrhea and seeing how might water and water sanitation and hygiene provision might um, be a key preventative measure to reduce diarrhea morbidity and mortality, especially amongst vulnerable populations such as children. And Many of us know safe wash is not universal. Um, if you look at the latest JMP stats from 2020, one in four people lacked safely managed drinking water. Nearly half the world's population lacked safely managed sanitation. And seven out of 10 people um, lacked basic uh, or had basic um, hygiene services in 2020. So synergistic wise, it makes sense that the wash and the health sectors are looking at 
um, how can we improve WASH globally in order to reduce uh, the WASH-related morbidities. But going back to the title of my presentation, as well as what I want to emphasize here, is that WHO um, definition of health, where health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Uh, when reflecting upon the, this, especially at um, UNU Inway, we recognize that a lot of the WASH diarrheal preventative models focus on biological aspects of disease risk. And while yes, this does affect a significant proportion of WASH-related mortalities, what this perspective also misses are a range of water-related physical, mental, and social well-being aspects that can also impact the day-to-day -day lives of people around the world. So what do I mean by that? Okay. So this is a general example. So of what when we think about what is a wash related disease, what what might that include? So in this scenario, imagine you're a doctor and a young woman who's 25 years old presents herself at your clinic. While she looks fit and healthy, she says she feels pain in her hands and upper back. And you examine her and you find that she experiences sensitivity in her bones and soft tissues in the in, in her neck and back. What might be the cause of this? Well, um, really interesting research coming um, uh, from Joanne Gear and a lot of her collaborators have noted that water carriage actually can be a major contributor to disability from musculoskeletal dis disorders in low-income countries. Looking at a cross-sectional survey um, from published in 2018 from three countries, South Africa, Ghana, and Vietnam, she found that over half of the respondents um, had a history of water carriage reported um, in which they felt that they had pain or disability. And they um, generally found that women with a past or current history of water carriage were more likely to report pain in their hands and upper back, likely due to sustained um, spinal axial compression in the cervical region. So the authors hence concluded that um, water carriage, especially by head loading, uh, might be a major contributor to musculoskeletal disease burden in low-income countries. And when we think about this, this can affect a significant proportion of the world's population because um, many people, approximately 663 million people, rely on off-plot uh, improved or unimproved drinking water sources to meet their daily needs, right? So we need to bear in mind how wash infrastructure, how it's designed, how we're expected to engage can put people at risk for poor well-being outcomes whether it might be carrying water or even to flushing a toilet, a poor flush toilet. I mean, look at this small child. How, many, um, how much water must he um, fill this particular bucket in order to ensure that, that that toilet functions properly? And what about the safety of utilizing sanitation infrastructure? A lot of research has indicated that the location of toilets, for example, can be linked to assault, especially gender-based violence. I also want to highlight that WASH should not be viewed solely a, as a preventative health measure, but it's also essential in treatment and care too. On the left is a table from a WHO um, and NGO collaborative guide on how to, um, on NTD, so neglected tropical disease and WASH um, and health integrated programming. Um, and this particular guide notes how WASH and for this example of lymphatic filariasis is needed for both infection and care for infected limbs and skin. Um, the blue text highlighting where WASH significantly features um, in terms of um, behavior, environment, social inclusion, and treatment of care for this disease. On the right is a picture drawn by an adolescent living with HIV in South Africa, who's flagging that their dream clinic, um, as in their dream health facility, has functional wash facilities. Can you imagine going to the doctor and not being, like if you're ill and you're not able to wash your hands or shower, or in this regard, you're a youth taking a cocktail of drugs, which is main side effect is diarrhea, but even your health clinic does not have functional wash facilities that you can use the stress around this, the mental health tolls. Um, those are aspects when we think about wash and health that 
aren't always accounted for, but are important to bear in mind when we are adopting that more holistic definition of um, health as per the WHO's definitions of good health and well being. So at UNU Inway, we recognize the diverse implications that safe water, sanitation, and hygiene can have on one's health and well being. So we support and promote research that um, includes expanding the disease classification tools, such as the Bradley's Drawers of Water tool, um, to holistically cover various aspects of wash related physical, mental, and social um, well being, including here unpacking some of what we're saying, the physiological aspects that um, are overlooked, as well as um, your mental and emotional aspects, um, which we recognize are really critical aspects of what we mean and what we want to achieve in terms of good health and well-being. In terms of actual UNU Inway research, so um, this broadened viewpoint is reflected in terms of um, the projects that we undertake. So we largely focus on environmental health determinants underpinning three themes, wash related um, disease risk in terms of models development and identifying disease pathways is our first um, project item. Um, the second one is looking at safe water stewardship from a range of contaminants of emerging concerns or other um, or other micropollutants, as well as new methods such as uh, wastewater based uh, epidemiology and its place in um, ensuring that we have safe water supplies and uh, environmental waters, as well as um, the third project looking at accelerating progress across interlinked SDGs, specifically for the water and health portfolio as the interlinkages between SDGs three to six. Some examples of our work. Um, so for the first um, for the first project is we are presently working with UNU uh, UNU's sorry with our sister institute UNU Inst International Institute for Global Health and the University of Ibadan in Nigeria to develop a multidimensional disease risk tool that assesses cholera risk in terms of likelihood transmission and sensitivity. Um, in terms of safe water stewardship, we recently published a global policy review on 25 um, AMR national action plans. And we found that when it comes to antimicrobial resistance, um, many countries actually underprioritize or completely overlook water related environmental health priorities, um, despite um, pushing and advocating for a one health model. For those of you that are um, unfamiliar with One Health, so One Health means that we are looking holistically at the impacts of human, animal, and environmental health comprehensively with regards to a global health problem. Um, when we look at AMR, why might water be significant? Why would it feature? In terms of environmental health, is recognized as the primary driver of environmental contamination. Um, and hence, when you think about it, quite critical when we talk about uh, effectively tackling AMR in terms of three major objectives, human, animal, and environmental health. So UNI Inway is suggesting and promoting that we pay more attention to safe water stewardship around the prevention, surveillance, mitigation, and innovation of water-related One Health AMR approaches. Um, in terms of SDG acceleration, um, we recognize that, um, well, this is largely reflective of how um, after seven years into the SDG agenda, the UN has recognized that we're off track and that the majority of the 169 SDG indicators um, that are currently inspiring movements across the globe will not likely be met by 2030 at the current rates of progress. And so in 2020, the UN thus announced the decade of action in which we're meant to mobilize government, civil society, and the private sector to collectively accelerate the speed and scale of SDG delivery. Um, drawing inspiration from the private technology sector, implementation of SDG accelerators have gained traction as a means for fast tracking the 2030 agenda, largely by tapping into programmatic synergies and aligning programming with targets from more than one SDG. So in 
At NWA, in terms of our water and health portfolio, we have a particular interest in accelerating achievements of, uh, of SDGs 3, 4, 5, and 6, so good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, and clean water and sanitation through um, supporting global measures, looking at, um, oh, I see that my animation's slightly off here, um, institutional wash. Um, so that might be, for example, wa wash in healthcare facilities. We're developing a wash in healthcare facilities e-course at the moment. Um, menstrual health and hygiene promotion, especially, um, well, this was with Susan. We had an unsuccessful, uh, uh, an unsuccessful MHH implementation research um, proposal um, that we're still looking for possible funders and collaborators to work with. And the UN's human rights to water and sanitation leave no one behind measures. So here we worked with our sister institute UNU INRA, which is its natural resources focus in Ghana to um, undertake an eight country pan-European, sub-Saharan African and South Asian um, analysis of um, eight countries looking at the various measures that they had undertaken to ensure that no one is left behind by the 2010 UN resolution on uh, um, human right to water and sanitation. So you can see that our portfolio, our research interests at um, UNU Inwe are quite uh, diverse. Let me unhide this slide. Are quite diverse, um, but I like the broadness in this regard uh, because there is then that technical element where you see a lot of the technological aspects, but still um, the research that we're conducting that I didn't cover in this presentation with um, leads such as Carmen Logie, Professor Carmen Logie, who um, you have previously met in another WASH lecture looking at disease pathways more traditional research, again, looking at your contaminants of emerging concern, but also um, not forgetting that equity aspect where we're especially hoping that well-being research will come out of. So thank you all for joining. Um, questions? Like I said, Kelsey, it would be 20 minutes. <laughs> Fantastic.